This is a Skywatcher Sky Travel 102 uh, millimeter telescope. It's a refractor and uh, it has its own uh, EQ1 equatorial mount. But I want to use it in altazimuth mount from the windowsill. As you know, we do astronomy from the windowsill. Astronomy for windowsill. And so I've adopted it to use the virtuoso mount, which is really good. The sky watcher again. I've uh, used the Los Mandy uh, dovetail bar, very sturdy, very good, to attach this. The attachment uh, mount bar of that uh, EQ1 is actually attached to the mount head. You cannot remove it practically, or with difficulty if you want. So I just use these rings, mounted tube rings, uh, with it, their own screw on the bolt holes of this Los Mandy. And this is the lens of the Telescope. I hope you can see. And uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and let us find the target and look at it. Okay, is the view through the my uh, uh, Ostara 40 millimeter uh, wide angle. And um, eyepiece, this is what you see. There is a very good eye relief with this the eyepiece, and the telescope itself also. Number for this telescope means the focal length of the telescope divided by the diameter of the objective, which is in this case 102 millimeter, and the focal length is 500 millimeter. The F number then is 4.9, makes it quite a wide angle for such aperture, it is really quite wide angle. So in a normal way you expect a lot of aberration, chromatic aberration, and also probably even um, spherical aberration. But in this telescope it seems they have done the two lenses which is a doublet of this le refractor they form it. They have a space between them, it, uh, and that spacing has actually, uh, in a way, has improved the aber chromatic aberration in a very good way. So, uh, so the chromatic aberration is improved, and we have a uh, less effect due to that. So let me go on, on a bright object, like the uh, branches of the tree against the background of a sky, and see how it will perform there. So we are now looking at the situation that normally any telescope will have some chromatic aberration. It's almost non-existent. All, I think this is a good value, considering that for buying an apochromatic uh, refractor or even a microsoft, you have to pay probably from anything between four or five times to ten times more than the price for this. I bought it second hand for around, uh, yeah, I think uh, 50 pounds uh, with everything, you know, everything in the box was there. And uh, we will put it in good use, of course. And for this new one is around 189, 200 pounds. So it's good value even at second hand. And uh, then compare it with the 2,000 pounds that you may have to pay for an upper chromatic telescope of this aperture. 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds sometimes. Uh, something in between. So, good value in general, and compare the size of the tube and pressure with this tonic water that I have here. And I will turn it around so we can see the lens. Okay, that's the lens. It needs a bit cleaning, but uh, more than that, the lens is good. It's quite large, it has a lens cap, it has the eyepiece, it has uh, everything that it needs to start your working on the planets and the stars. I'm looking forward to have a clear sky, probably not tonight because as you can see it's doom and gloom and uh, cloudy. 
But I will try it on Jupiter, Saturn. Deepest sky object probably will be the best usage for this telescope. Like star clusters, galaxies, it has a big objective lens. So it's four inch telescope refractor, very good, capable, and uh, hopefully it will be performing for us. Okay, I'm now using a 10 millimeter orthoscopic eyepiece. As you can see, the image is really good and crisp. I don't see, I see a slightly purple fringing, but you may not notice it. In the corner of the image, you may see some violet coloring. But other than that, it's good. So probably we can use this. Any of these fruits you see there will be the size of the Jupiter or Saturn, with the rings of, of it, of course in the viewing unless you say that they may be too bright and the brightness may ruin the image that was the view through the orthoscopic eyepiece now i'm back to the wide angle 40 millimeter ostara fossil eyepiece Of course, I've not changed the focal point focus, but if I change it now, probably you can see more clear. All in all, I think the optics of this telescope is really good. This eyepiece is brilliant, Ostara. This is my. This is a wide, the most used eyepiece that I have. I have probably 50 eyepieces, but this is the best I can use. It's cheap. I bought this from probably 15 pound or something. New, you can buy it for around 20 pound. And uh, I have two of these, so I just use it on each telescope probably. And really good, really good telescope, wide angle views. And these are the fruits I'm looking at. So. Which one has yellow bits? That was the one I was looking at. Okay. And the window closes. And this is the view toward a few flowers in the garden. So again, you can see the clear clarity of the image. I cannot tap the f my, with my hand on the picture, but you can see it be, it's almost in focus. At least for my eye. The image quality, I'm really impressed. And the ease of movement. And you can see almost I can point it to the zenith. And the arrangement is really good. It's better than the other telescope that I have. You can almost point it to the zenith. The angle of this is now around 75 degrees yeah and things like Vega if it is real high you can look at this and nice I'm happy with this Los Mandy really saved the day without this Los Mandy that's from my mid uh, uh, LX90 uh, guider scope for that so it has its own rings when this um, Vixen, or called Los Panty Dovetail. Really helpful.
This is a Skywatcher Sky Travel 102 uh, millimeter telescope. It's a refractor and uh, it has its own uh, EQ1, a quadrilateral mount. But I want to use it in altazimuth mount from the windowsill. As you know, we do astronomy from the windowsill, astronomy for windowsill. And so I've adopted it to use the virtuoso mount, which is really good. The Sky Watcher again. I've uh, used the Los Mandy uh, dovetail bar, very sturdy, very good, to attach this. The attachment uh, mount bar of that uh, EQ1 is actually attached to the mount head. You cannot remove it practically, or with difficulty if you want. So I just use these rings, mounted tube rings, uh, with it, their own screw on the bolt holes of this Los Mandy. And this is the lens of the telescope. I hope you can see. And uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and let us find the target and look at it. It's the actual image that I can see. And what you will see is what is it uh, through the telescope after this. This is the image of the moons behind the cloud. Moon behind the cloud through the Sky Watcher Star Travel 102 with the um, eyepiece which is 40 millimeter in focal length. I must say, I must quite, I'm quite impressed by the quality of the image. can see a lot of details in the full disk of the moon. I'm really impressed. 
transmit the quality of this telescope. I expect a lot of chromatic aberration. I don't see anything. I see the face of a fat man at the moon. Probably won't. No. Okay, now I'm using the uh, Skywatcher Nirvana. Yeah, from a thick layer of the cloud, behind the thick layer of the cloud. Using my mobile phone to photograph it. Now this is the to the bothers classic uh, orthoscopic eyepiece, ten millimeter. Three point two millimeter eyepiece. You see much details. Again, back to the Brother Order Classic. Just amazing the clarity. Amazing clarity, as you can see here. Oh, there's a bird flying. With an insect on the lens. Aliens on the moon.
Yeah, that's a rhino gamma, the bright patch in the middle. It's a magnetic anomaly. It's interestingly symmetrical in most parts of it. But uh, there is a tail of it, like a handle of a pan, which goes upward, or a golf handle. Golf club handle. As you can see the cloud layer, thin cloud layer, passing over it makes it difficult to focus. is on to the right that coffee bean feature that has no name and I believe it's volcanic in origin kind of um, fountain of lava in the passes there are also some grab and you can see in the middle of it there is a hollow area that's two fault parallel faults the middle part of it has fallen and it's called graben Interesting for a geological study and a structural geology. I try to focus on that feature that I'm the coffee bean feature I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, that's what is now at the center. There is a crater here called um, Asiruddin. That's the crater which I'm now zooming on it. Tiny one at the end of the three craters which are joined together. It's called Asiruddin after the Iranian astronomer.
This is the time of the lunar cycle that mostly people will miss because it's very early morning and there's half of it falls in daylight. And either people are sleeping yet or they are just uh, going to work. So practically they will miss. And only you can see it in such a day like today that it will be holiday.